I think we have started recording. Perfect. There we go. There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. I uh, I'm having internet issues at my house, and so I have run into the Berean office. Um, I got here about 20 minutes before the uh, meeting was going to start, so it's been a little bit chaotic this morning. Uh, I think a lot of us know a little bit about chaotic right now. How is everybody doing? There is a lot going on, isn't there? Unbelievable. Um, I, don't worry, I'm not going to talk to you about political views or, or anything about what's kind of happening right now. We all have uh, our own thoughts on, on that. Um, but gosh, we, we're in the middle of COVID and now we've got social unrest and we've got all of these things, all these distractions. And I don't know about you guys, but I am noticing it is definitely affecting not only myself, but you know, a, a lot of the agents that I'm talking to in some way, even if you don't really feel like it. We've, we, we've had to close down the West Seattle office yesterday because of uh, concerns over you know, a potential threat, which uh, as many of you may have seen, was not a threat at all. It was a very nice uh, 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 thing that they had going on yesterday in West Seattle. Uh, we had the Burien office have an incident where we thought maybe something might happen here and people were rushing in and grabbing things out of the Burien office just in case and to be safe. Um, no matter where we are, uh, in our lives. This is definitely affecting us, what's going on. It's impacting us all in some way or another. And being your advocate, that's my whole job here, is to advocate for you. I just want to remind everybody that right now is a great time to kind of recheck your, your mindset, right, and kind of where you're at. Um, how are you doing? How are you working through your days? Are you able to continue to focus on doing the things that you need to do? If we were all accountants, we would uh, we'd log in this morning and we'd get plugging away at numbers and we'd be crunching numbers for eight hours. And at the end of eight hours, we would have accomplished uh, tasks. We would have something to show for our work and we would be paid uh, for that. But as real estate agents, it, it, as real estate agents, it's really easy, right, to get caught up uh, in, in what's going on. You can you can get um, uh you know where you're you're getting too excited or you can get to where you're getting too low and and we have this ability to kind of lose ourselves in the moment and, and let hours and days just kind of go without maybe being intentional about working on our business and i just want to remind everybody make sure that um we're not ignoring what's happening around us but we're also not ignoring our businesses as the CEOs of our own businesses. And that's hard to do right now. I acknowledge that, but I just want to rem remind everybody, you know, make sure that we're refocusing each day on the things that we need to do to continue to build your business uh, for now and for later, because at the end of the day, you're the boss of your own business. And that's the great part about this. Uh, also, I want to just mention, of course, as we do so well, you, you know, we, everything going on. We want to keep it out of the offices, right? Uh, just please be respectful of each other and our space to come and work. Uh, I know with the offices closed right now, we don't have as many people physically in the offices right now, uh, but you, when you need to do something and you come into the office to get those things done, uh, you're uh, around other folks and, and just, just make sure to be respectful of each other's opinions and thoughts. Um, I appreciate that. I know everybody does. Um, I will, I am, I, Gosh, you guys, I am so excited. Actually, uh, we have two new agents that have just signed on with our West Seattle office. Now, this is something I've known about for a while, and we've uh, been kind of waiting until the right time to bring them on. But uh, Angelica Thrasher and Bethany uh, Sharifi are now uh, part of our West Seattle office. Uh, you may or may not know uh, of Angelica and Bethany, but they are or were the nuts and bolts of the Rebecca Matsui team uh, at Alchemy and, and previously from KW. So really, really happy to have them come on and be a part of our West Seattle team. They bring a ton of great energy. They, they bring a ton of experience in sales and uh, they're just a great addition to the team. So uh, welcome Angelica. I know she is on right now and I know that Bethany had an appointment. So unfortunately she wasn't able to be here, but really great to have uh, them on board over in West Seattle as we keep growing. Speaking of uh, new agents and growing and I didn't say recruiting, but I'll say recruiting. Um, we have an interesting uh, opportunity that continues that, that we continue to kind of uh, build on. And I want to put it out to you guys, the agents, and say, hey, you know, we do have an opportunity. If you know someone uh, at another company that may um, be interested in joining us 
for upcoming clock hour classes. I'd love to hear from you about that. Uh, I have been bringing a, a lot of you for years now, right? We've been bringing people and inviting people to different uh, clock hour classes. I'm really careful about who we invite, especially when they're all in person and come into our office uh, type of a space. Uh, but right now with them being virtual, and we have one on Thursday this week, right? Uh, but now with virtual clock hours, um, uh, clock hour classes, it, it gives me the opportunity to reach out to more agents in our community and offer them an opportunity to jump on and get some clock hours and, and get kind of a soft feel of, well, what's Berkshire Hathaway all about? Well, they're doing clock hours for their um, for their agents. How is, how is that working? Well, or my company isn't doing that, or I'm not getting that kind of support. Um, we have, uh, I believe we've got about 10 people right now, 10 different recruits uh, that will be joining us for the sales meeting on, uh, or for, I'm sorry, for the clock hour class on Thursday. And I would love to invite anybody that you know that you think, hey, this would be a great person to offer this to. It's really nothing uh, you know, uh, negative for me. It doesn't cost us anything to add more people, but it really gives a great opportunity to start a dialogue about Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, and, and give somebody, give give the recruits something of value, right, um, to be offering them. Zoom room this last week was awesome. Uh, Dave Stribling from the Roseburg office uh, uh, talked about what's your wig, and he talked about uh, lead measures and lag measures and all of those things. And just a reminder, you can find that video on YouTube. You can go to my channel on YouTube. Uh, also, I sent an email uh, on that. I think it was uh, that I sent it out on Monday. It may have been Tuesday morning that that email went out uh, with the Zoom room. Uh, so check that out. In West Seattle, uh, the keypads, I sent an email out saying, hey, those keypads now work. And you can use the elevator code on the keypad and it'll get you into the building. And that was all not accurate. Um, apparently it's supposed to be accurate. Uh, I was told that it worked, uh, but I have been uh, told now several times uh, that it does not work. So if you need to get into the building after hours and you don't have your key, uh, let me know. I can get you a temporary code that I know does work and they are working to get uh, the elevator code uh, up and running. That should hopefully be within the next day or so. So sorry, I, I, I don't know. I, I can only tell you what they tell me, right? I, I'm not sure what, what happened there. Um, Karen Grace uh, did a virtual broker's open yesterday at her listing in Normandy Park. It went really, really well. Uh, I know that she had a lot of people through. Very cool uh, idea. If you're interested in doing something like this, come chat with me. Uh, chat with Karen. Um, I don't want to send everybody to Karen. Don't worry, Karen. I'm not. I'm not trying to say, hey, 20 people call Karen. Uh, but hopefully, um, we were spitballing. The the staff was spitballing the idea of, of maybe doing a, a Zoom room in a couple of weeks that has to do with uh, virtual open houses and brokers opens. So uh, stay tuned for that. We may uh, we may do that, and, and maybe Karen would uh, be willing to to share there. If not, we also, of course, can share that experience and kind of some of the things that she found that worked and, and um, how to kind of make it make it happen as we're kind of retooling what we're doing, right? Um, yeah, that was uh, that. Also, uh, speaking of retooling your business, just want to remind everybody that on the back side of your websites, right, in the marketing center, there are really great resources for virtual tours, also for all kinds of different things, right? But if you're like, hey, um, you know, do we have a resource for me to send out things about virtual tours that I want to do? Um, yeah, there is some amazing marketing pieces. They look great. Uh, and you can find them there on the back side of your website. They've, uh, they've already been uh, uh, created and put there. So look for those there. Um, what else? Let's see. You know what? We've got um, phase 1.5. Who in the world knows what phase 1.5 is? Apparently, it's where King County is trying to go. Uh, so let's talk about COVID for a minute and the lock down or lock in that's been lifted, but now we still have all these restrictions and we're kind of in this interesting spot. And, and uh, Susie sent me a, a text about this and, and Susie will talk about that in a minute, but I just want to be really clear and identify a couple of things. Um, the governor spoke last Friday uh, about uh, kind of this new option of 1.5, phase 1.5, and he uh, went ahead and increased the number of cases per 100,000 people in a county that needs to have in order to, you know, to be to the next phase and all of these different things. Um, it's a little bit complicated and happening on Friday and then having all of the things uh, Friday evening and through the weekend and, and through the beginning of this week, I think it's gotten lost a little bit. So I want to be really, really clear uh, that phase 1.5 is not phase two 
in any meaningful way for real estate agents. OK, so in phase two, we know that some things will happen. Uh, real estate offices can open up in a very specific way. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, also, we can show houses with more than one person. Right. So now we can have two people at phase two. But we can't today in King County and we won't be in King County for quite a while able to show homes with more people in them than just yourself and one other person. All right. You will hear it from me the minute that I know that we can do that. Now, it doesn't mean that in phase 1.5, we can't have the opportunity to have that adjusted some to allow us to do that. Uh, the, the Washington Association of Realtors is always working uh, with the uh, uh, you know, with the governor's office on trying to give us more access to do more things as appropriate. And so those opportunities definitely uh, could be there where, where things could be lifted and changed, because as we've seen, things can change really, really quickly uh, with the requirements. But for right now, that's where we're at. There is no opportunity to do anything different in real estate than we were doing before. And that includes opening offices. Susie's great question was, hey, when will we reopen? And the answer to that is, I have no idea. Uh, because we can't reopen until we go into phase two. Now, we do have a plan for reopening and kind of what that will look like. And some of that plan is, is still being worked on. Uh, but once we do that, there will be restrictions in the office. There will be, we will have to do signing in and, and well, maybe not signing out, but definitely signing in for tracing. There's all kinds of uh, tracing, tracking. Um, there's all kinds of things that the Government has said, hey, when you get to phase two, if you're going to open a real estate office, these are the things you have to do. And uh, we're not going to get too much into that today. We will when we get closer. Um, but I, I believe we're still a little ways away from being, uh, you know, uh, from opening the offices because I, I think we're still a little ways away from being uh, at phase two. We just are. So I hope that answers your question. Sorry, Susie, not exactly the answer that uh, I would like to bring to you, but the answer is I don't know. Um, the last thing that I'll chat about before we get into um, stats is uh, the the MLS form 22 AL. All right, the uh, request for loan information. I just want to put it out, and I want to just ask each of you individually as a whole: Are you using this form? Do you know what this form is? If you're not using this form, then we're missing an opportunity that we need to be utilizing for our sellers. We're definitely putting ourselves in a position where uh, we're not fully supporting our sellers, especially right now when we are seeing more and more appraisals coming in low. OK, I'm not going to get into the form today. Uh, you can uh, do one of two things to learn more about the form and go, oh, I don't know. How, why am I not using the form uh, 22 AL? And what does that mean? And why would I use it? And why is it so important? Uh, later today, Russ and Nalani will be sending out to the, the respective offices uh, their daily um, email of value. And uh, in that uh, will be the Annie Fitzsimmons video on the 22 AL. Also, I will refer that you uh, recommend that you go to uh, my YouTube channel. There is the forms class on the 22A that references the 22AL, how to use it, why to use it, all these different things. So you can get from Annie and then you can get also kind of some practical use of it. Annie tells you kind of how it works, um, you know, the ramifications for not using it. And I think in the 22A class that I do, we talk about kind of the practical use and how to, how to, um, uh, make it part of what you're doing. So at any rate, I just want to bring that up because we've had uh, quite a few low appraisals. I mean, a lot, actually, uh, a lot of low appraisals right now as appraisers kind of struggle with what's going on and, and trying to be really, really concise uh, with their appraisals. So we want to make sure we are paying attention to that. Um, I think, Alice, I think that I saw a hand raise and so if you've got a question, just uh, type it in the um, comments and we will definitely handle it afterwards if that's what that was. Um, awesome. Uh, let's talk about some stats. We've, stats have been really interesting lately, haven't they? Stats are interesting in general, but they've been really interesting lately. Um, we emailed out a, a, a flyer last week on how to find the um, 
the week over week stats on the MLS and also how to find the key box opening stats. So if you didn't see that, go back and check your email from last week. Uh, that did go out to you. So a lot of these stats come from that space. Uh, but uh, let's take a look. Active listings right now are um, down a couple hundred, 239 from last week. So from, from uh, 23, Basically, 23,000. We're down to 21,000 right now in listings week over week. And year over year, uh, the last week, we were at we were at 2120 last week. The year before, we were at 2827. So still inventory is low, right? So what does that tell us, right? Seller's market, there's still a lack of inventory for sure. We know that there are buyers and there is still a lack of inventory. Uh, pendant stats. Remember last week, the pendant stat was kind of the whoa, interesting stat of the week, right? It was huge, huge numbers above where we were at any one week uh, the year before or earlier in the year. Uh, the pendant stats are down just a little after that huge week, but still are up 2,311 um, and uh, still solidly over where we were last year at this time. So pendants being at 2,311 which is really darn close to where we were for the active listings. At any rate, um, 2311, at last year, uh, we were at 2,058. So down three, or we're up 300 pendants week over week from last year. So again, what does that tell you? If, if, if listings are down, but pendants are up, people are buying everything, right? They're, 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 they're eating the scraps right now. And so uh, just some interesting things there. Sold numbers continue to climb. Remember solds, uh, you know, homes closing is kind of the lag measure. So we know that, that that's still catching up as these pendants, as these big pendant numbers start to turn into sales, we'll start to see those closing numbers just go whoosh, straight through the roof. So uh, we're, we're looking for that in the next few weeks here. Um, median sold price uh, is kind of my interesting stat of the week. And that is um, that week over week, the, uh, last week over the year before, the same week the year before, uh, 475,000 is the median house uh, price in the entire MLS versus uh, 445 uh, this year. Now, median house price per week does a lot of jockeying, but what we're seeing is, is that uh, maybe a, a more higher priced homes are uh, selling right now, which is interesting. Again, people are buying up just about everything out there. Um, and then the last stat that I want to share is the showing activity. Uh, showing activity is uh, up this week. Remember last week it was down 1.1% uh, after just climbing, 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 climbing. And this week it's back up uh, just a little bit, 2.77%. Uh, and again, we're at showing numbers that are above anywhere that we were uh, pre-COVID when there were still open houses and touring and things like that going on. So the showings are, are just up. They're just, they're up. Um, so uh, there's your stats for the week. Uh, your calendar, we got some stuff on the calendar. Uh, and I definitely want your attention through this because at the end, we're going to talk about a big change to sales meetings. Uh, so hang tight, that's coming. Tonight, uh, West Seattle had a trivia night all set up and the host, the gal that was going to be doing that is unavailable. Something happened, a family emergency, and she is unavailable. But we're going to go ahead and do a happy hour this evening, same time anyway, so you can join. Uh, no trivia, but uh, you'll get to see uh, everybody's smiling faces. we got a lot of people signed up for that tonight at 7 o'clock for West Seattle. Uh, Thursday, June 4th, that is tomorrow, right, is the 3 o'clock hour class from 1 to 4 from Amerispec, uh, and that has to do with, uh, go, with uh, a green build, going green. Uh, a heads up on that, you received an invite from me on that with a link to go uh, to be able to show up for it. Uh, but as we're seeing with these different companies that are doing or the different providers that are giving us clock hour classes, uh, each of them is a little bit different. And this one, uh, these folks have a another page that you're going to need to sign on to in order to get your hours. Uh, that email will go out early this afternoon and you can sign up there anytime between uh, uh, today and, and when that, the class starts tomorrow at one o'clock. Uh, but make sure to do that because if you don't, you won't get your hours. So watch for that email. The uh, next Zoom room is next Monday. Uh, in the uh, title of next, uh, the, the next Zoom room is what is the now norm, right? How are you retooling? What's going on? 
where are we really right now and what are you experiencing? This is going to be uh, the, the last class uh, that uh, David taught. It was really more uh, a, a, a teacher taught class, uh, right, or a leader taught class. This is going to be much more of a discussion uh, led by uh, Russ Lassard next Monday. Um, and then uh, we've got a Reliance class next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, I think that's just a, a half hour class uh, talking about interior pages uh, and SEO pages. The description says uh, discover how to create the SEO pages to use on your website, uh, which also include uh, creating saved searches and embedded maps. So if that is of interest to you, Reliance uh, has you covered on that next Tuesday. Now, I said just a minute ago, we have an announcement about sales meetings, um, and that is that we are going to move sales meetings. And I hate to do this. This I, I definitely didn't want to do this. However, um, the management team for all of Washington and Oregon uh, has kind of settled on uh, once a month doing a sales uh, uh, our meeting uh, on Wednesdays from nine or from I'm sorry from 10 to about noon and so last a couple of weeks ago we had to push the sales meeting back to 11 30 and I was hoping that that might just be a one-off uh, but it's not I, I I've got confirmation that we're going to continue to do that management uh, meeting and so I don't think that it makes a whole lot of sense to go through the month and go well everything's going to be at 11 o'clock except once a month it's going to be at 11 30 or 12 or on a different day or something like that it makes much more sense to maintain a day and a time and so sales meetings starting next week will simply move to tuesdays it'll be the same time 11 o'clock we're just going to bump it up one day so uh, make a note of course we'll be putting out flyers and email reminders and all that stuff but sales meetings are going to go to tuesday at 11 o'clock so that we don't have to move them uh, periodically through the month and we can just maintain that day and time. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, hand it over to um, our our uh, friends here. Let's see, uh, Kara Nunley, uh, you've got something for us today, uh, I believe, right, with uh, Prosperity? Yes. Yes. So, Good, morning. Good morning. Almost, Almost afternoon, afternoon, everyone. I know you guys had a lot of information over the last two weeks from Prosperity and um, the lending side. So just kind of wanted to keep it um, short and sweet this morning and talk about rates. Um, rates, again, are still really low. Conventional, you're looking at uh, 3.250. FHA uh, and VA, you're looking at 2.750. So really, really good um, rates on the government side and on the conventional side as well. It's a great time to still get those refinances in. Um, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, second opinions. I've been getting a lot of second opinions, some of them on the purchase side as well. And one of them that I'm seeing is lenders are offering discount points on any rate that they're sending, really. So, a couple examples I got this week were from Quicken and on the loan estimates, every single loan estimate I received, they were quoting um, everyone with one point to two points in discount rates and no one's questioning them. Right. And so when I got those estimates, I, you know, educated the, the borrowers or the buyers and I said, you know, did you know you're spending almost four thousand dollars to get this rate? And they're like, well, what does that mean? So it's just something, a reason why that you want to get them that second opinion from prosperity, right? Because me and Mark, what our job is to educate them. I was able to get those deals and save them almost $2,000 and get them a better rate, right? They were offering a 2.99% interest rate and they were offering, it was charging them um, let's say like $2,500 to get that rate and they all they saw was 2.99 right well I'm saying okay I can get you a 2.875 it's going to cost you $1,800 so I'm giving them a better rate and saving them money so it's all in that discount point a lot of these lenders are charging discount points with every with every loan estimate that they're sending so it's a great opportunity to make sure that the borrowers and the buyers are understanding what they're reading right so 
that second opinion is great right now because we're offering that $500. You know, it's not that $100 gift card. It's that $500 closing cost bonus from Prosperity. It's only for you guys in Washington and Oregon. So they're not offering this for everybody at Prosperity. It's only for you guys um, up here. So it's a great opportunity as long as we can get them in contract by June 30th. So it's a great push um, for refinances or even for purchases. So just that second opinion, that second look, have them send over that loan estimate to Mark or myself, and we'd be more than happy to educate them, um, to show them how much money we are able to save them and possibly give them a better rate. Okay. Awesome. So just short and sweet today. Um, again, me and Mark are always available for questions if you guys have them, okay? Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Thank you very much. That sounds amazing. Um, Kathleen, I know, is on. I do want to uh, lead into Kathleen by saying that I um, I had an experience uh, with equity that I just real quick want to share. I, I've been using, um, since we, we brought equity into the fold, I've been using Krista as my closing agent uh, for my escrow deals. And I had a listing where I had a buyer who was buying something uh, contingent on selling their house. And so we had to do a simultaneous close. And generally speaking, uh, you may go, well, gosh, I want to put, uh, you know, those two transactions at the same title uh, or an escrow company so that um, it's a little bit easier maybe to close that way. You don't have two entities. Uh, but I think a little bit different. And I said, hey, I am going to give this uh, on the uh, buy side or I'm, I'm sorry, on the list side to equity. And let's. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's give them an opportunity to do something that is difficult to do. Close two transactions one day right now with COVID and everything else, uh, two different uh, escrow companies, and and see if we can close a deal in the same day. Of course, I gave myself some some uh, leeway on the backside with uh, with days of possession and things like that. But uh, sure enough, it was uh, flawless, absolutely flawless. And uh, Krista and Equity did a, just an amazing job of making sure that that first deal closed. The wire got out. It was all smooth and was able to close then the, the purchase uh, later that day. Uh, just phenomenal. I just I, I really appreciated it. And I, I, I did it intentionally to put them to the test a little bit on something that I know is difficult to accomplish. And they did an amazing job. Kathleen, what do you have for yeah. us today? Good morning. Nice to hear that, Tay. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that we really work hard to, if you've got two different closing agents on, on transactions, that we try to make sure that we can do our best to line up funds for the next one to close, even if it's at a different closing agent. So awesome to hear that. Um, hello, everybody. I want to say welcome to the new agents that came on board, um, Angelica and Bethany. I know Bethany's not on, but welcome. Um, I am one of your point of contacts with Equity Title, um, Azure Partnership with BHHS, and I am. I just want to make, make sure you guys know that I'm accessible and you can reach out to me at any time with any questions that you have um, that we've, you know, how are we um, doing things or have things in place with COVID. We're, we are still doing curbside signings at both locations. I do have an update for remote online notarization. I do see a trend in that further extending. It has now extended to June 17th. We'll probably still can see, see that continue to extend. Um, we are still offering the virtual home books. We still have virtual flyers that you can um, add to your listings if you're interested. Please feel free to reach out to myself or Janet or Kelly if you want any more information on that. Um, and I do know that some of your other agents out of your office have tried sending some transactions our way. I've seen that some of those funnel in. So from the equity standpoint, I just want to say thank you for that. Um, and also to remind you that we have our remote um, deposit Zocum app too. So we've got that for earnest money um, as well. Nice. So short and sweet awesome. today. Great to see all Thank of you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevleen. I appreciate it. Um, this morning too, we've got uh, Pam Oligu. Did I, 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 I think I've got your name pronounced right, Pam. Pam Oligu with uh, uh, American Home Shield to tell us a little bit about what's going on with them. Good morning. Good to see you all here today. I know you're all used to me joining your meetings and I talk about how a home warranty can benefit your sellers, your buyers, and you as a broker. And it can. And then I tell you about all that the warranty covers and how it adds budget protection for both your sellers and your buyers. And it does. And the warranty adds budget protection for you as a broker as well. How often have you been asked to give up a portion of your commission to complete repairs and maybe make that deal work? 
or after closing contribute to a broken system that the inspector missed? And if you can't see me, I'm saying missed in question in quotation marks. Well, today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Um, we are going to talk about what a home warranty does not cover. So I've been with American Home Shield as an account manager for 17 years now, and not all the situations that I'm going to talk about have occurred here in Washington, but some have, and they've all occurred in the western part of the United States, and they've all happened to a homeowner with an American Home Shield warranty. Um, so I'm just going to share a few things that we don't cover. So when we when your client has an American Home Shield warranty and they have a failure, we ask that the system fail due to normal wear and tear. It's old, it wears out, it fails due to normal wear and tear. So a plumbing failure, not normal, would be broken glass and Barbie doll heads, Legos and Hot Wheels, and the most unusual was a human figure, and that actually went to the police department. <laughs> We cover stoppages at American Home Shield Home Warranty. So we will clean or clear a stoppage for your client from 100 feet out from the nearest accessible clean out valve. We don't cover for roots because that's not normal wear and tear. And we don't cover for roots so bad that they grew up and out of the toilet and ran along the baseboards of the master bath. Homeowners called them aliens. Normal wear and tear does not include vandalism. So we would not cover for the tenant who was very upset that they had to move out of the home and the day before closing poured powdered cement down the pipes and then just enough water to make it cement. That was not covered by their home warranty and unfortunately for them it was not covered by their homeowner's insurance either because the previous policy had lapsed and the new one deemed it pre-existing. We ask that a system or appliance is in good working condition at the start of the contract. So we ask that it passes a simple visual and mechanical test. It looks like it works, it does what it's supposed to. We do cover undetectable pre-existing conditions, but we don't cover the heat exchanger that the homeowner decided to fix with gum to repair the crack. Not only was that pre-existing, but he probably had a really sore jaw. We also ask that the items be installed and accessible. So the washer that's out at the end of the lawn that's rusted out is not a covered item. And by accessible, I say, if, if we need to go repair something behind a wall, we will go through drywall. We won't go through cabinetry. We won't go through flooring. We won't go through tile, wood. That doesn't mean we're not going to repair it or replace it. It just means that the homeowner has to make access. So we had a situation where on the third floor was our hot water tank. It had no door. It was completely walled in. They had no staircase. They had no catwalk. And to top it off, they lived on top of a very muddy hill and you couldn't even reach it with a ladder. In order for that hot water tank to be accessed, they had to get a crane and pull it out. And I'm thinking that was probably pre-existing as well. I get tons of questions about pests from all of you. Oh, there's a lot of pests we don't cover. So we don't cover spiders, roaches, bats in the belfry, raccoons in the ductwork, a litter of kittens in the ductwork. Or my favorite and one where I was involved in was when the homeowner was very upset because I was not going to come out and personally remove beehives that were under the eaves of the home that she had just moved into. So it's really, it's really important to set proper expectations. So you all are the real estate experts and you don't have to be the home warranty expert. That's my job and I'm here for you and your clients. So if you have a seller who's gonna have the listing coverage and he, has question, he or she has questions about what's covered, how to contact us, maybe some concerns they have, please give them my cell phone number, give me a heads up, say, hey, they're gonna call you, they have some questions, or perhaps you have a new buyer that has questions about the warranty, what it's covered, how to use it. Same thing, give them my cell phone number. I am happy to go over, answer any questions that they may have. I once had an attorney send me our whole contract that was highlighted, marked up, and I think it was an hour long conversation going over the contract. It's kind of scary because I'm not an attorney, but it, it, everything turned out 
turned out good. So I want to remind you all what we do cover during the listing. We cover your major systems. We cover the plumbing, the electrical, the heating, the AC, the ductwork, and the hot water tank. And we do reach out to your seller and let them know they have the coverage. We actually mail them a copy of the contract and a contract and let them know how to get a hold of us. And um, it goes to their mail like snail mail. Now, the buyer can choose from several different levels of coverage. And we reach out to them several different ways. After closing, we will email your buyer and say, hey, congratulations on your new purchase. You have a warranty with American Home Shield through us. We'd like to set up a time to speak with you and let you know what your coverage is all about. What's a good time to call you? If they make that appointment with us, we call them. We explain their warranty. We answer any questions they may have. We let them know that they can add options if they choose. They have 60 days from closing to do so. We talk to them about the rekey option because they probably should have their new residence rekeyed. We let them know that they have that option through their warranty, that they can pay the service fee, and we will have six locks rekeyed the same and provide four keys. And they can do it now. They can do that multiple times throughout their contract. We help facilitate that. If the homeowner doesn't give us a time to call, we still will call at least one time to make an attempt to reach them. We also mail them their contract. And throughout the, their, their coverage uh, period, we reach out to them multiple times. There's a quarterly newsletter they receive. We let them know about discounts that they're eligible. They have a discount for TV mounting, uh, furnace filters, appliance discounts. So we try to educate them about those different things. And then of course, towards the end of uh, their, the end of their uh, contract, we reach out to them to renew. And so I talked to you a lot a bit to, about today about what we don't cover, but we cover so much more. In 2018, we paid out 9 million 999,000 nationally to our homeowners in service claims, repairs and replacements, it's dollars spent. I don't have our 2019 numbers yet, but big numbers. So I am here from you. I'm gonna leave my email and my cell phone number on the chat just to make sure you all have it. Cause I know you're working from home. So if I'm not in your phone, you can put me in and I'm here to answer any questions or help your clients. Perfect. Perfect. Pam, thank you very much. I know that a question came up how to contact you. So that would be great if you put that into the chat, uh, how to get a hold of you. That would be fantastic. I'd sure appreciate it. Um, all right. So um, I, th I think we need to maybe end today kind of on a light note, uh, something a little bit more refreshing and uplifting. Uh, and, and that is I just I just want to challenge everybody uh, to do something for someone else today send a message out of nowhere that just says hey thinking about you how are you doing something like that an agent did that for me on monday and uh i just uh, i really appreciated that it really came out of nowhere and uh, i'm still thinking about it today three days later uh, about how that just simple act of hey how are you doing i was thinking about you um can really you know help people through times when there is a lot of stress and strain going on whether it's with their job or whether it's with their health or whether it's with uh the social unrest or whatever it is i just challenge everybody to see if you can make a positive impact in somebody's life today uh i will end uh with that uh, oh the the buffy and the warren actually will end with the buffy and the warren um the Buffy this week is going to go to uh, Maria Sotelo. She has been doing an amazing job building her business. I, I know that a lot of you will recognize she's on her new crew meetings. She's in the Zoom room meetings. She's on sales meetings. She is uh, attending uh, all of the uh, clock hour classes. If there is something going on to build her business, uh, Maria is there. Uh, you can guarantee to see her there. Now, of course, I'm not looking at the, the roster right now. Of course, today she probably had a dentist appointment. Uh, no, of course not. She's there. Hi, Maria. <laughs> Congrats. Uh, you, uh, the Buffy to you this week. Well, well earned. Uh, and then the Warren for West Seattle. Uh, I'm going to give it to John Wynn. I just, I, I don't know. I can't say it enough that when John creates a marketing piece 
for his clients that he uses on his social media and puts out there uh, to help inform his clients about what's going on in King County. And then he emails it and, and lets us send it out to the entire group of, of agents and says, hey, use it, you know, go ahead and support, uh, you know, your own business and, and use this as, uh, as a tool to do that and, and a value to give to your clients. And John does that for us every single month. Um, I just think it's fantastic. And, and I know I've mentioned it before, but the Warren is going to John uh, this week uh, for that. Thank you so much, John. Really, really appreciate that. If anybody has any questions, I will stay on for those. Uh, otherwise, I will see you all uh, next week on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Again, remember Tuesday at 11 o'clock. All right, let me pop back here. Um, a question for Pam. Uh, Bruce, you got a question. Is the conversation with the buyer always after closing or can it be done before closing? Pam, oh, I'm sorry. See, and this is so tough to do this way too. I, I keep doing this each week. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Sherry Sears says John gets a parking spot. Yes, John, you get a parking spot. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to use it much, but you do get a parking spot. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, I will stay on for a little bit if anybody else has individual questions that you'd like to ask. Uh, otherwise, have an awesome week and uh, rest of your week. We'll talk soon. Bye, everybody.